Let's remember what we did yesterday. We started out this guy. Do you remember what it's called? M5 is... Yep, so... <laughs> Very good. Uh, more, more generally speaking, uh, this is about this is about modeling nonlinear relationships. So you have two quantities; they're related to each other, but not everything is related in a super simple straight line way. Um, you get other things, right? So I want us to um, today just step back a little bit and take a bit of an overview. Musical. I get it. Uh, Let's go back to AM4 for a second. Remember, this is a straight line. When you see this kind of form, uh, and the key, by the way, is that you've got an x term, and there's actually an x to the power of 1 hiding in there, right? It's just that we don't usually write that. So that distinguishes our straight lines, this 1, from these guys here. These are not linear functions. They're quadratic functions. And the key indicator is a particular number. Which number is it? It's the fact that things are squared, right? So this is to the power of 1, this is to the power of 2. Um, you can have the squared in a couple of different spots, actually a variety of different spots, but these are the two main ways you'll see it. So these guys here are quadratic functions. Bit of a funny thing, quadratic means like when we look at the algebra, but when we think of the shape, that kind of characteristic curve, the shape is called a parabola. So just distinguish between those two. When you say quadratic, you're talking about the algebra. When you're talking about, when you say parabola, you mean what does it look like, okay? Now, I just want to highlight this guy because we didn't talk about it at all. We had a look a lot um, at these guys here. And we tested lots of values out and we plotted the points and then we drew a picture. But sometimes we want to provide the same equation in a slightly different form, just rearranged a little bit. Um, I'll give you an example of why when we think about this. You know how you've got the M and the B, and they mean something. They're not just random uh, letters. What do the M and the B signify? M signifies gradient, and B signifies the y-intercept. Very good. So when the equation is written in this form, and you look at, I'll write an example over here. And you look at something like this. So I'll just make this an example. When you look at that, you can immediately know what the gradient is. It's going to be 5. And you can immediately know what the y-intercept is going to be. Negative. negative 1. Very good. So that's what this form is sort of geared for. Now, <laughs> thanks, Eliza. This form here, ax squared plus bx plus c, it's a mess. It's terrible. It's really hard to work with. There's um, very little that you can see immediately, oh, these are important features. And so that's why we rewrite it like this. So these guys have names. Good morning. This guy here is called general form. General form. Thanks. Cool. This guy down here is called, I'll just put some double lines here. This guy is called vertex form. There's a couple of names, but this is the most helpful one. Here's why. Um, the vertex is the bottom or the top of the parabola. Maybe just draw yourself a little parabola shape over here. Something like this or something like this. The vertex is where the parabola turns around. So see how this one turns around right at the origin? Its vertex would be the origin. Or this guy here turns around at whatever those coordinates are. That would be the vertex. Um, yesterday we were thinking about minimum values or maximum values. The minimum or the maximum, they happen at the vertex. Here's the nice thing about vertex form. Just like this tells you the gradient and the y-intercept right away. I can't click with my left hand. Uh, this gives you the vertex right away if you pay attention to these numbers. So let me just give you an example. If I wrote down, say, this. Uh, I just chose 5, so let's use a different number, shall we? If you looked at something like this, <clears throat> excuse me, the vertex is going to be 3, comma 1. Um, yesterday we were using some software to help us. We used Excel. Um, I'm going to point you to another piece of software. We've used this before, Desmos, because we can all graph this right now. And I'll prove to you that this is the way it is. OK, so what we're going to do is just play around with this guy for a minute. 
So if we type in y equals this as it is, and you can see you've got the keyboard down here, it's a bit easier than Excel to use. Let's just chuck in the characters, y equals. And as promised, you can see for this particular version, this particular equation, there's the vertex right there. In fact, you can even type in, um, Desmos is really nice, it'll take coordinates for you if you like. Um, I was saying 3 comma, oh, not 2 commas, just 1. 3 comma 1, there he is, right there at the vertex. Okay? So when you see something written in this form, this guy is the x coordinate, and this guy is the y coordinate of the vertex. That's an if. Okay, now just be watchful though. Just be watchful. Morning, Cameron. Thanks, man. Be watchful because the signs kind of play tricks on you. So notice how I've written this, and it's a bit unusual. There's a minus here and a plus here. Those are kind of important. So see how I've got the same minus and the same plus there? If we switch around the signs, okay. If we switch around the signs, and we'll, we'll play around with this on Desmos, um, you get things that are a little bit different. So, for example, if this was an x plus 3 instead of an x minus 3, where would you predict, based on what we can see here, where would you predict the vertex would be? Hmm. If I change the minus 3 into a plus, whoa, what happened? It's come all the way over here. Now you can have a look, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit just so you can see the, um, the numbers. There you go. You can see the vertex has come all the way over here. It's not over at positive 3, it's over here at negative 3. That's a bit funny, isn't it? So have a look at this. See how it's a plus, not a minus? It's the opposite of that. Okay, so it's admittedly a little bit confusing, but that's why you've got some technology to help you experiment with that a little bit. So these two numbers here, the 3 and the 1, in this context will give you the vertex. What do you think this 2 does out the front? Hmm. How big, how wide? Yeah, yeah, so that's a good way to state it. So we can experiment with this. If you've got something like this on your screen right now, um, I'll do a handy thing that Desmos can... Um, oh, go away. Let's turn off the internet. There we go. Um, I'm going to replace the 2 just with a letter. I'm going to just go with the letter... What can I choose here that's easy? Let's go with the letter A. Now, um, when you put in a letter that's not X or Y, it will prompt you, hey, do you want to add a slider to muck around with that number? So go ahead, hit the blue button. This is the graph 1, X plus 3 all squared plus 1, because A equals 1 at the moment. So if I go ahead and I change A, watch what happens. Ooh, there we go. As Rico was mentioning, predicting, you can see as I make A bigger, this is 10 x plus 3 squared plus 1. It gets narrower and narrower and narrower. Um, I went from 1 to positive 10. What would you predict happens if I went to the opposite direction over here, to negative values? Okay, so when I have a go, lo and behold, ta-da! When you have negative values for A, you've got a parabola that's facing down. We call it concave down because um, Think back to science and lenses and stuff like that, it's concave that way. Okay. So use Desmos to play around with this, but just like before, in fact, I'm going to hit the animate now so you can, it'll move without me talking. Notice where the vertex is, the vertex is always locked in place. No matter what A is, the way we would say it is, the vertex is independent of A. A can change and be whatever you want. The vertex doesn't depend on A. The vertex depends on these guys, see, it's endlessly entertaining, isn't it? It's, yeah, we're easily amused. Does that make sense? Okay, so just come back to here if you haven't written it already. This is the x-coordinate. This is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So now, I'm just going to pause it so you stop watching it. Um, there we go. So now I'm going to label this 2 out the front. What did we say? How, how would you word it? I would say it controls um, the width. And also the direction. Is it, is it wide or is it narrow? Is it facing up or is it facing down? Um, the one fancy word that 
encapsulates all of this is concavity, but that's a bit of a fancy word. And we know what width and direction are, and concavity is a bit technical. We don't really need to worry about it. So I think that's a fine definition for that.